All right, um, problem 83, we're given this table that's showing the values of this differentiable function f of x. And you got to figure out which of these um could be like, could be false. So it's kind of like a, like an analytical, like logical problem. So we really have to like, we really got to think. So I'll try my best to explain these. So let's see what's going on in general. So we're going from negative five to three. So negative five to three. So we're increasing our x values by eight. And then we go from six to negative two, but we go from first to six to four. So we go down by two. And then we go from four to negative two, and then we go down by six. So then it says for A, there exists a value C where C is going to be between, you know, three and negative five, such that F of C is one. Um, okay, so this could be true because it's, this is just saying, is it possible that, like, it's possible that Y could be one in, in this interval? And it is because just because it goes from negative six to negative four, or sorry, when it, just because it goes from six to four and then four to negative two, doesn't tell you what happens between here. Maybe it goes like up to 20 or down to negative 100, then goes back up to four. Like all we know is that at those endpoints, it's those values. We don't know what's going on between. Any value is theoretically possible between them. So it's not gonna be A. B, there exists a value C such that F prime of C is one. Okay, so this is saying that there has to be a value from, from, from like, there has to be an, a, an X value between these two X values, between the endpoints, such that the derivative is gonna be one or the slope is one. Now, we this is this is possible to be false because unless we see um like a a, a rate a rate of change that's going to be um one at some point this is like the average av um the mean value theorem then we can't say for sure that, that this could be that this is possible um so this could be false like this 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 doesn't have to be true because this doesn't have to happen. This is not requisite. I think they're trying to confuse you with um, with C because um, what we know is that if it goes like from across this interval, when it goes from um, negative five to three, it increases by eight, and then it goes from six to negative two, and then it decreases by eight. So you have negative eight over eight, which is, means it goes down by negative one. So there has to be at least a, a value such that you can find a, a slope of negative one. So like this could be possible, this could be possible, but B, B is gonna be our answer. So let's not waste any more time with that. All right, 84. So the function F is the antiderivative of the function G defined by this guy. Which of the following is the x-coordinate of the location of a relative maximum for this graph? Okay, so um, like, let's just remember what um, what we need to understand about a relative maximum. A relative maximum, you know, on a graph, you know, is you know, kind of like a, a peak, right? and for it to be a peak, that means before this, before the peak, the derivative has to be positive, and after it, the derivative has to be negative because it has to be increasing before and decreasing the below. That's just how it works, you know. Just think about a hill or something. So we can find where um, the derivative is, or we can find where this relative maximum could be by looking where the derivative changes from positive to negative. Where when like what of what value of x is the derivative change from positive to negative? So then we can just calculate the derivative, and I 
well, it doesn't matter what we call it, F, G, whatever. So we can find the derivative of G. So G prime of X. I mean, we, let's just look at a graph. Let's look at a graph of G prime of X to see where it changes from positive to negative. So let me bust out my calculator. Actually, I just realized this is actually, I kind of said that wrong. It's, this is actually easier than, than what, what I just said. Like, so, so, so let me, it's, this is the antiderivative. So F is antiderivative. So that means G is the derivative. So we just have to look at this graph. You don't even have to worry about finding the derivative of it. So let's just, let me just use my calculator and just show you. So my sorry about that. We don't, the concept is still the same. So we want to look where this changes from positive to negative. Um, so here's our graph. Let me see if I can zoom in. So see, you zoom in and you can see that the graph changes from positive to negative at about 1.31. That's this graph, g of x. And then so you know relative maximum is gonna, could be right there. And so the answer is A. Mm -hmm. or 85 function f is, is continuous on the closed interval negative 2 to 2 the graph of f prime the derivative of f is shown here which on which the interval is f of x increasing well it's just going to be it's just going to be when this graph is positive because your, the derivative when a graph is increasing, let's say this is f. I think we just kind of did this in the previous problem, like f means f prime is positive. When it's decreasing, f prime is negative. So this becomes positive after zero and negative all along here. So it's increasing from zero to two all along here because it's positive. Don't get full that it goes up and down. Like this is the actual derivative. So zero to two, so the answer will just be C.